students, welcome to your first lesson on functions in grade 11. In this lesson we're going to be looking at the parabola. First of all we're going to revise what we know about the parabola and then we're going to teach you about a new form of the parabola equation. So let's get started. First of all, what do we know about parabolas? We know that the standard form of the parabola is a quadratic equation. So it's y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a means that if a is greater than naught, it means that we have a happy graph. What that means is that the graph is concave upwards, okay, if it's a happy graph it's concave upwards, whereas if a is smaller than zero then we have a sad graph. In other words, if it's negative then the graph is concave down. If c is bigger than zero, so a basically is your amplitude, it's the way the graph is either going to be thin or fat or if it's going to be happy or sad. C is your Y cut or your intercept and if, a is, if C is greater than zero then we said the graph cuts the Y axis above the X axis. So if I had to draw a rough drawing here that for example would be a graph that has a Y cut above the X axis therefore C would be greater than zero or if c is smaller than zero, then the graph cuts the y-axis below the x-axis, below the x-axis. So that would mean that if I drew this again, that being the y-axis, then the graph looks something like this, then that would be cutting below the x-axis and therefore c would be smaller than naught. So if we look at this little picture, what can we say? We can say that definitely a is bigger than zero. Why? Because it's a happy graph. And we know that C is what? It is smaller than zero because it cuts below the x-axis. In other words, the y cut is negative. Whereas in this picture, because it's a sad graph, it's concave downwards, we have that A is smaller than zero, but in this case your C is greater than zero because the y cut is above the x-axis. So that's what we've learned so far. Now we're going to teach you about a new form and it's called the turning point form. Now grade 11 is a turning point as you should know is the point where the graph turns. In other words if for example if a graph it goes like this and it goes like that and it goes like that, that there is the turning point. So that is your turning point of your parabola. Now this equation here is great because what it's done is it rearranges this so that your minus pq is the coordinate of the turning point. Your minus pq is your coordinate of the turning point. So this point here would be minus p q and that would be your turning point coordinate. Okay so let's do an example to see how this works. So we have been given y is equal to 2, x minus 1 squared minus 18. So using that information and knowing that this is actually in the form of y is equal to x plus p squared, okay, minus plus q, okay, and we know that the turning point is minus p q, therefore we can immediately see that that is going to be minus minus 1 and minus 18 so that becomes 118 so our turning point is going to be x is 1 and y is 18 so there's that graph there I mean the turning point now we can find out where it cuts the x and y axis by letting things equal 0 so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to let x equal 0 so therefore we've got y is equal to 2 0 minus 1 squared minus 18 which becomes 0 minus 1 is just minus 1 minus 1 squared is just 1 and 2 times 1 is 2 minus 18 equals minus 16 so therefore the y cut is minus 16 and then if we want to find out where it cuts the x axis we're going to let y equals 0 so we've got 0 is equal to 2 x minus 1 squared minus 18. So if we solve for this now, the minus 18 goes onto that side and becomes 18 is equal to 2 x minus 1 squared. Then we go, okay, fine, we need to get rid of this 2, so we're going to divide both sides by 2. 
and we end up, and I'm going over here, so we end up with 9 is equal to x minus 1 squared. Now to get rid of the square, we're going to square root both sides, but please grade 11, remember that when you square root both sides, what do you end up? You end up with a plus or a minus. Therefore, we're going to end up with plus or minus 3 is equal to x minus 1. Therefore, x is going to be plus 3 plus 1, because if I take this across, it becomes plus, or it's going to be x is equal to minus 3 plus 1. So it's going to be equal to either 3 plus 1, which is 4, or minus 3 plus 1, which is equal to minus 2. So that means that my cuts are going to be over here, which is at 4, or over here, which is at minus 2. So let me try and draw this. Okay, so let's go up through there. And then let's go from here and it has to come. Okay, unfortunately that's the best I can do with this horrible little digital pad I'm using. But please, grade 11, your graph is not supposed to look like this, but it is a very steep graph. Okay, so that there is our graph. And do you see that our axis of symmetry is along the x equals 1, 1 line? So x equals 1 is my axis of symmetry, symmetry. Okay, so that there is the graph for 2x minus 1 squared minus 18. Now let's try another one, and this time we're going to go 2x plus 1 squared minus 18. Now do you see that the difference between the previous one, that's x minus 1 squared plus minus 18, and this is x plus 1 squared minus 18. So can you make some predictions? What do you think is going to happen? Well, first of all, we know that the y point of our turning point stays at 18. So somewhere along this line is the turning point. But this time, it is a negative version of 1. So this time, the, the x point of our turning point is going to be minus 1. So my turning point in this graph is going to be minus 1, minus 18 minus 1 minus 18. Okay, so if we go look, do you see that here it was 1 minus 18 and over here it's minus 1 minus 18. So what has happened? This graph has shifted over. Okay, this graph has shifted over horizontally. So now, if we had to do this sum, which we're going to do, we're going to do exactly the same as we did the last one. We're going to let x equal 0 and this time we've got y is equal to 2 times 0 plus 1 squared minus 18 which is again going to give us minus 16 so it's going to cut through here at minus 16 but let's now solve for the x cuts what do we do we let y equal 0 so we let y equal 0 for the x cuts so we go 0 is equal to 2 x plus 1 squared minus 18. Solving for our x, we're again going to get 18 is equal to 2 x plus 1 squared. Divide both sides by 2 and we get 9 is equal to x plus 1 squared. Now just to make it easier, I'm going to put x plus 1 squared on the left hand side simply because I like to have what I'm solving for on the left hand side. Now to solve for the x, what do we need to do? We need to square it this side. But remember if we square it the one side, we have to square it the other side. And then secondly, remember if we square it, we end up with a plus or a minus. So the square root of 9 is plus or minus 3. Therefore we've got x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus 3. Therefore, x is equal to plus or minus 3 minus 1. Therefore, our two roots are x is equal to plus 3 minus 1 or x is equal to minus 3 minus 1. So therefore, we've got that this becomes plus 3 minus 1 is now 2 or minus 3 minus 1 is now minus 4. So this is over here at 2 and that is at minus 4. And again, I apologize in advance if my graph looks terrible. Remember that I am drawing this on a digital pad and I don't have the facility of a pencil and an eraser to make my graph look beautiful. So you guys, if your graphs are looking like this, you're doing something 
wrong. Okay, remember that your graph is supposed to be looking a beautiful graph that looks like that. Much better like that, okay? So I apologize for this terrible drawing. So that is how we are using our turning point formula. We can use it to find the turning point without having to factorize and anything else. So let us look at the effects on the graph. We've already said that if A is smaller than zero, then it's a sad graph. So that there would be a sad graph, okay? And if Q is bigger than zero, then it's going to be cutting above the x-axis, okay? That's actually zero or equal to. And if Q is smaller than, then it's going to be below the x-axis. Now we also know that if P is positive, and this is important, if P was positive, what happens to this graph? The graph is shifted to the left. So if you look over here, you can see that this was positive, and because it was positive, it shifted the graph to the left. Okay, so if this p-value here is positive, so if the p is greater than zero, it means it shifts, it shifts the graph to the left, okay? Whereas if p is smaller than zero, it shifts the graph to the right. Okay, so positive, it shifts the graph to the left, and negative shifts the graph to the right. And the A's and Q's do exactly the same as what they were always doing. So grade 11 is a really good idea is to get to grips with this because it helps you to know what you should be expecting when you draw these graphs. Right, so let's do one more. It says draw the following graph showing all the intercepts and state in the domain and range. Okay, so what do we have? First of all, we have a negative graph, okay, but we also have our P and Q. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my P and Q. We know that the turning point is minus P, Q. Therefore, in this case, the turning point is going to be the negative of negative 5, which is 5 and 4. Right, so that's my turning point. To find where it cuts the x-axis, I'm going to let y equal naught. So we're going to let y equal naught. So therefore we've got 0 is equal to minus x minus 5 squared plus 4. So therefore this becomes minus 4 is equal to minus x minus 5 squared, right? Divide both sides by minus. Square root, so we've got the square root of 4 is equal to x minus 5. But remember when we do the square root of 4, we end up with a plus or minus 2 is equal to x minus 5. Therefore, we can say plus or minus 2 plus 5 equals x. Therefore, my x cuts are x1 is going to be plus 2 plus 5, which equals 7 or x2 is going to be minus 2 plus 5, which equals plus 3. So if I had to draw this graph, and I'm just going to change this color now to black just so that we can do this. So if I had to draw this graph, and obviously I'm doing a rough sketch, at the moment what do I have? I've got a turning point at x is 5, y is 4. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's my first, my turning point, right? I also know that my x, I know this is a sad graph, so I'm expecting, because this is negative, I'm expecting the graph to look something like this. I also know that the first cut is at 7, so that's 5, 6, 7, and the other one is at 3, 3 over there, no, 1, 2, 3, yep. Yeah. 3, and that is at 7. Now all I need to do is find out where it cuts the y-axis. And in order to do that, I'm going to let x equal 0. So let's let x equal 0. Therefore, you've got y is equal to minus x minus 5 squared plus 4, but this x is equal to 0. So this becomes minus 
minus 5 squared plus 4, which is going to be minus 5 is 25, so it's negative 25 plus 4, which is negative 21. So therefore, this is going to be cutting, I have to extend this a bit, and it's going to be cutting, and if I draw this, now I have to try and draw this right, okay, so this looks like that, where that is obviously the 7, and if I carry that down, that there, if it is a better drawing, would be minus 21. This would be minus 21. Now grade 11, when you do this in the exams, if you're not given graph paper, which you should be given, then please use a ruler and line off, count out your little things, and they must be there must be to the actual measurements, okay? So in other words, if you decide that that there, that distance there is one, then you need to measure that and then measure again for two, etc. for three. Please don't do it rough like this. I unfortunately don't have a graph paper and I don't have a measure, so that's why I'm doing it rough. So please make sure you do it nice and neatly on your graph paper. Now we haven't finished this question because what are they asking for? They're asking us to state the domain and range. Now I don't know if you remember but the domain, remember, is our x values. It's the values for which this graph exists on the x plane. So do you agree that this graph is going to carry on and on and on and on forever towards negative infinity and it's going to go on and on and on and on towards positive infinity. So therefore we can say the domain is just that x is an element of real values. Okay, no problem. Or, or you could say that x is going to be smaller than infinity and bigger than negative infinity, if that makes you happier. Or there's another way. What's the other way? Remember this? You can have a curved bracket, a parenthesis, minus infinity, semicolon, and then why is this curved? Because we're not including it. Right. Let's talk about the range. Remember that your range is y, what, how the farthest graph extends on the y plane. And remember the way that I remember the range is the fact that the range has got a little g, so it's got a hangy downy leg, and so does y. So now, the y, the top of this, the turning point of this, this is 5, 4. So the highest point of this parabola is at y equals 4. Anything above that, there is no more parabola. So we could say that y is an element of real values, but y must be smaller than or equal to 4. Okay, that is one way of saying it. The other way we could write this is y is going to be smaller than or equal to 4 or bigger than in it bigger than negative infinity. Why are we saying that? Because do you see this graph will carry on and on and on forever downwards. That's minus infinity. And the last way we could write it if we want to do it in this notation is, we, oh that says 8, we're not supposed to say infinity eraser. Infinity. And the last way that we could actually do this is using this notation we could actually just go we got to do close bracket because we're including the 4 and then negative infinity and then obviously a curly bracket of parentheses because we're not including negative infinity. So grade 11s please go make sure that you understand how to do this um, new form of the P and Q using the turning point form and go practice and then do the assessment at the end of the section. Have a great day.